Hey y'all, let's take a look at the equations with parentheses. Ooh, okay. Don't forget an equation. Uh, looking at that equation right now, we don't have to solve it in a second, but look at it. That equation is telling you that everything on the left side, two times that three minus x in parentheses is the same thing as one of those x's minus five. Okay, since we know that is true, uh, we know that both sides are equal. Whatever we do to the left side, we're gonna have to do exactly the same thing to the right side and vice versa, of course. The only thing different about these and the ones we've done before is that on these, you're going to have to actually take that two and distribute it through that per, those uh, terms inside the parentheses. Then you got it. It'll look just like one we've done before. And again, I'll mention this. Um, a lot of Saxon stuff that they do is these new types of problems that you go, I don't recognize this type. And they tell you, oh, it's kind of a new type. But look, just do this one step or maybe this two steps and it'll look like one old one that you've done before and you go oh yeah i recognize that now okay now i can solve it boom there you go so let's go ahead and do that we know how to distribute the two if you distribute the two here you get first of course a six then you get two times a negative x gives you negative two x and that's going to equal x minus five and now we're at a point where look that looks familiar right okay and again you can take you can get rid of the x's first or you uh, move the x's over you can get rid of the six whatever you want to do let's just go ahead and get rid of the six I'll subtract the six there, and of course I subtract it there as well. And those are gone, we're done. So we have a negative two x there, and we have an x that follows, and then negative five minus six is negative 11. All right, well, on the right side, we're gonna have to get rid of that x, we don't want it there. So we're gonna subtract the x. And of course, we will subtract this x as well. There we go, gone. We have an equals, we have a negative 11, and we have negative two x minus a one x, gives us negative three x. And we know what to divide by now to solve for this. We just divide by negative three. And then a negative to 11 divided by negative three and negative divided by a negative is a positive. So you can just leave it 11 over three. You can just stop right there. If you wanna put three and two thirds, fine, no big deal. You might find about half the time as 11 thirds in the back of your book, maybe even more than that. So, all right, let's take another look at another one here. Go ahead and pause that and copy. And okay, I mean, you know, this time you have parentheses that you're gonna distribute on both sides. Who cares? We can do it once, we can do it twice, we can do it three times. We can't do it four times, though. That's, that's unreasonable. Okay, well, let's do the distribution here. Three times one is three. Three times two x is six x. And I'll carry down the uh, plus seven. Negative four times x, negative four x. Negative four times positive two, negative eight, right? Okay, now we're in much better shape. All right, let's take this three and the seven, and we'll go six x plus 10 <clears throat> equals negative four x minus eight. All right, I just somehow, I like to get rid of the numbers first, although it doesn't matter, we can do either way. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and re get, uh, get rid of the 10 here. We'll subtract 10 there, subtract 10 there. There we go, that's gone. We get a six x, we get a negative four x, and we get a negative 18. Okay, well, let's add 4x to get rid of that part. Plus 4x there, plus 4x there, and we got 10x, and we have a negative 18. And all we need to do now is just divide by 10, divide by 10, that's our answer. A negative divided by a positive is a negative, and we can write 18 tenths, or let's go ahead and since the, both of those are divisible by 2, We'll knock that down by two. That's gonna be a nine there, and there'll be a five there, and that is our answer. And there we go, okay, all right. Copy this one down. And when you're ready, we'll do it. Even if you're not ready, we'll still do it, okay. Let's distribute. What is 15 times four? Trick about four, by the way. If you wanna multiply something by four, double it. Then double it again. So 15 twice is 30, then 30 twice, is 60. All right, 15 times negative five, that'll be negative 75. And then of course the X. All right, 16 times four, again, let's double it. 16 doubled is 32. 32 doubled is 64. And here's a trick for six. Ready for the trick for six? All right, you take the 16 and the six and you go like this. 16 times six is 96. There's your trick. I couldn't think of a trick for six. Okay, 96x and then plus 10. Okay, all right, well, let's just uh, knock this on down here. 60 minus 75x 
is equal to, I got a 64, I got a 10, that gives me a 74 minus 96x. All right, let's see here. Uh, let's get rid of 60. Subtract 60. Subtract 60. There we go. Gone. Negative 75x equals 74 minus 60 is 14 minus 96x. Okay, now we're going to get rid of 96x on the right, which we do by adding 96x, and we're going to add 96x. Okay, well, we got two, two opposite signed numbers, which means we take the absolute values, 96 and 75, and we subtract them. 96 minus 75 is 21x, and since this is farther away from zero, this will also be a positive, okay? So that equals 14, because this goes away. All right, last step here, or almost last step. Divide by 21, divide by 21. We have x is equal to 14 over 21, and you certainly recognize that seven goes into both of those, it goes into 14 twice, and it goes into 21 three times, and there we go. And that is equations with parentheses. Okay, go ahead and uh, we'll do one more. Copy. This is a little strange, this one. Slightly different. Go ahead and pause and copy that one. Okay, the weird part is the minus in front of the first set of parentheses there. If you want to visualize this, there's two ways you can look at this. I'm going to go ahead and copy down on 12. Okay. You could either say that this negative applies to everything in here individually. In other words, it's just going to be the opposite of that. So negative 2x, you could write negative 2x, and you could go the opposite of positive 5, negative 5. You could do it that way. Or if you wanted to think of it as a negative 1, you could visualize negative 1 times 2x, negative 2x. Negative 1 times negative 5, negative 5. Either one of those is fine. Okay? Here's the other weird part. Uh, if you're going to add this, you can do the same thing if you want. You can visualize a 1 here if you want. So positive 1 times x is just positive x, and positive one times negative three is negative three. And there we go, that's all you need to do. Okay, let's try to knock this down a little bit here. I got a 12, I got a minus five, that gives me seven minus two x. Then I got a negative two, and I got a negative three, that gives me negative five plus x, all right? Well, let's go ahead and get rid of our uh, seven on the left side so we can uh, make this a little simpler here. So I'm subtracting 7. I'm subtracting 7, and there we go. Gone. Negative 2x. Negative 5 minus 7 is negative 12, and there's my plus x. And we need to get rid of that x on the right side. So we are going to go ahead and subtract that. Minus an x there. Minus an x there. Yoink. Negative 2x minus x is negative 3x. That equals negative 12. All right. Well, we're going to divide by negative 3, and a negative 12 divided by a negative 3 gives us a positive 4. Just for the heck of it, okay, look at this. We're going to, we say that the answer is 4. How do we know that? Let's go back to the original equation in black, and I'll write this in black here as well. I'm going to replace this, this entire equation by uh, every x, I'm going to replace it with a 4. So let's go up here and copy this entire thing down, which we have 12 minus... And let's just go ahead and put this. 2 times x, 2 times 4, we say it's 4. 2 times 4 would be negative 8, right? And of course, minus a 5. That's going to equal a negative 2, which is this, plus 4 minus 3 is 1, right? Those should be equal. Well, 12 minus 8 is 4. 4 minus 5 is negative 1, right? And what is negative 2? plus a positive one, negative one. So we have an equation that says that one side is equal to the other side. After we've put in a four for this, we prove, that proves we're right. So we got it right. Four is absolutely the answer to this equation. Okay, all right, practice problem. Uh, look at that, I lied to you. One more, <laughs> one more. All right, this is a much longer one, much longer one. Copy this down and let's take a look at it. All right. This first negative, again, we can look at this and go, the negative applies to everything inside the parentheses. So whatever is, it's inside the parentheses, we're going to write down the opposite of that. So the opposite of 4y is negative 4y. The opposite of negative 17 is positive 17. 
plus a negative y is the same thing as minus y. And that's going to equal, well, I mean, there's not much of a point in writing 2y minus 1 in parentheses. I'm just going to copy the same thing down. Nothing is really happening to it. And the opposite of the opposite of y is just y. And there we go. All right, well, let's take a look at these and knock these uh, like terms together. Negative 4y minus y is negative 5y plus 17. And a 2y plus a y is a 3y minus 1. All right, I'll subtract the 17 first. Negative 17 there, and then negative 17 there. Yoink. Gone. Negative 5y is equal to 3y minus 1 minus 17 minus 18. There we go. All right. Right side, I'm going to take care of that 3y by subtracting it. Take care of that 3y there. All right, well, negative 5y minus 3y is negative 8y. That's gone, and I have negative 18, and I'll just go ahead and divide each side by negative 8 and by negative 8, and I get y is equal to, well, a negative divided by a negative is a positive, so that'll be 18 over 8. And of course, since those two are visible, uh, divisible by 2, we'll go ahead and put, that's going to be a 9 over a 4, and there we go. You want to put the 9 over 4 back in here and try the entire thing with, try to, yeah, no, okay. I kind of figured you wouldn't there. It'd be fun. You want to, you're, yeah, no, okay. I hear you. All right. All right. Try to practice that. Try A, pause it, and see what you get for A. All right. A is going to be 2. You saw. All right. Pause it and for B. Okay. B is, it turns out to be 1. One, pause it and try C. C is going to be eight. All right, pause it and try D. And that is it. Just kidding, you just A, B, and C, okay. See you guys next time, have a great day. Take care.